Hi, I'm Clark on Tempters. Today on our electrical series, we're gonna talk about a simple, straightforward boat circuit. We're gonna talk about your bilge pump, how to wire it up, and things to think about. Up till now, everything we've talked about has been quite theoretical. This one, we're gonna take a little bit of a left turn. Let's call this one a lab. We're gonna do very, very practical stuff. We're gonna talk about a complete circuit, and it's a circuit every boat that has a battery in it would have. Um, your bilge pump. It's an important circuit. Uh, if you have a hole in your boat or you're taking on water or it's just open to the rain, it might be a very important circuit. So today we're gonna to talk about an entire boat circuit, a simple boat circuit, and how to wire it up. Well, what's involved in this circuit? There would be a battery. There would be a circuit breaker because we always want a way of protecting the rest of the boat from the overpower that can come out of the battery. We talked about current control devices last week, so you can review that if you'd like. We're going to want a switch of some kind that can turn off the bilge pump in case we need to do maintenance. It can do whatever we need to do with that switch. We, of course, need the pump itself. And it's nice if a bilge pump turns on automatically when there's wire, we don't want it running all the time. So another switch that will adjust whether the pump is on or not based on water in the bilge. Well, let's build this. There's our battery. There's our bilge pump. Here's our float switch. Here's our circuit breaker, and here's our actual on-off switch. Let's talk about all the components in a little more detail. Here's our battery. In the case of uh, here, we're using an itty bitty little uh, six amp hour battery. But honestly, if you have a jet ski, this is what you'd have, and you'd still want a bilge pump in that thing. Um, it's likely the batteries on a yacht are gonna be bigger than this, more like automotive size batteries on up and they can throw out an awful lot of power. Honestly, this thing being lithium iron phosphate, it can throw out a lot of power. So, that can start a fire if uh, some wiring goes wrong. So we wanna protect that with a circuit breaker. We've got a circuit breaker here. We've got it very close to the battery. In fact, we'll plug it right in now. It's gonna protect all the rest of the wire on the positive side. This little wire is not protected. Uh, you just have to accept that sometimes. You make sure it's in a nice, safe place and there's just nothing going to go wrong with it. Now, the bilge pump itself is just one I have in storage. This is what I use on Temptress. I know it looks really small, but it fits right down into the triangle part of my bilge. I have some massive, big bilge pumps. They never get used. These little ones do all the work. This particular one is rated for 3.2 amps, and it's, it suggests right on it, use a five amp fuse. There's no need to fuse bigger than what your load is because it'll never draw more power than that unless something goes wrong. And you want to make sure your fuse is not bigger than what the wire could handle in a short circuit situation so that the fuse goes off if things short before the wires uh, fuse. <laughs> so we've got ourselves a five amp circuit breaker here. This is our float switch. A float switch is just about that. It's a switch that floats. When the water rises, it goes click, makes contact between its two wires. When the water goes down because the pump pumps it out, it goes click again and it turns off the pump. And finally, our actual activation switch. What we need at a minimum is called a single pull, single throw switch. That means two connectors and it's either on or off. This is actually a single pull, double throw, on, off, momentary switch. And what that boils down to is as a center position, which is off, nothing's connected to anything. It has an on position in one direction where these two contactors are connected and this one is left floating. And it has another on position in the other direction that's spring loaded. It won't stay there. 
and when it's held there, these two are connected. You'll see why in a minute. Okay, let's take a second to hook it all up. Start out with a ground wire, leaving our battery here. And we're gonna hook that to the bilge pump. If you haven't seen these little spring connectors, um, I think maybe even the next video is going to be about ways of terminating wires, crimp connectors, all kinds of things along that line. I'm jumping a bit ahead, but I've just discovered these. Um, they're pretty good. They're not perfect, but they're pretty good. But they're really nice because you can uh, disconnect them and put them together. So for this lab, they're perfect. So this uh, line now goes to the negative side of the bilge pump. The common center bit of this switch, I'm going to bring over to the circuit breaker. The uh, on position of this switch, I'm going to bring to the float switch. And then the float switch is going to be connected to the positive side of the bilge pump. So now we have our circuit. It's off now, nothing functions. But if I turn on the uh, activator switch, if water comes, the pump spins. So we've got a good little basic bilge pump circuit now. The power comes from the battery through the circuit breaker so the rest of the wiring in the system can't turn up uh, if something goes wrong. It comes into the switch which lets us turn it off or arm it. When it's armed, if the water comes in and uh, raises above the float switches area, the pump comes on. Let's say we want to add one extra feature. It'd be nice if we can decide when the pump comes on, when we can force it to come on, a manual mode. So all we have to do is take the other part of the single pull double throw switch, the side that turns on when you go to the momentary position, and connect that right to the positive side of the bilge pump, right to that part of the circuit. And we've got now a switch in the middle off, bilge pump is off, good for maintenance or any reason you want it off. Uh, oops, on automatic position, the automatic position, the pump is off unless there's water. And then a manual position, but it's momentary. So you have to be on the boat, you can't accidentally leave it on, and hold the switch down. Why that's good, you'll find that you can't mount this low enough. If you mounted it too low, the pump would always be sucking air and not functioning properly. So you have to mount that for a higher water line. Sometimes you just want the pump to run and suck all the water out of the boat right till it gets to drawing air. And that's where it's nice to have that manual position. Also, you get to listen and say, oh yeah, I think my pump's probably working. You get to say, hear it suck air so you know your bilges are dry. All kinds of reasons. You'll find you like that circuit. That is a good, real bilge pump system for any size yacht. But I like to add yet one more part. It's nice if we can know when the bilge pump is working. On a small boat, you can hear it. But on a bigger boat with lots of heavy wooden floors and stuff, you might not be able to hear it. Or if the engine's running, you can't hear it at all. At all. So I'm going to add this one more bit of circuit. I've got an LED here. Take the negative side of the LED. Actually, what I'm going to do is run a nice good ground wire right up to where my control panel is. So I have a, a, a source of ground here. And then I'm going to take the other side of my LED. This is kind of interesting here. I'm going to hook it on to the manual side of the bilge pump switch. Okay. And I'm going to explain it in a minute, but let me get this hooked up and I'm going to show you what happens. Okay. So, 
we now have a setup where if I push the switch in the uh, manual direction, I apply power right to this pull, which bypasses this switch and runs the pump. Watch what it does to the LED. Lights it up. Here's the cool part. If I put the switch in automatic mode and the water line rises and the pump comes on, the LED also lights up. Why this happens is because this switch powers the pump and the line that would be forcing the pump to come on with the momentary switch allows the electrons to flow back up to the light. Why the light is important is if you're running your engine, you're not going to hear your bilge pump. And it could be running and running and running and you won't know it. And it might not even be keeping up. It's really good for your uh, mental health to be able to look at a light and see it maybe come on occasionally. Because when engine's running, usually there's a little water coming out of the shaft. But not running too much and certainly not running all the time. So I really recommend an indicator light. Let's go over it again with a display of the circuit. We have a battery. Batteries put out a lot of power. That power could be dangerous running through wires if you had a short circuit. And think about this. In this circuit, these wires are actually going to be submerged in salt water. There's a good chance they're going to short out. So we need to protect the circuit with a circuit breaker or a fuse. And we have that right close to the battery. The fuse is sized so that it can pass just a bit more power than the device needs, but not enough power to start the wires on fire. The circuit breaker passes over to the switch that lets us have uh, three modes of operation, off, automatic, and manual. It also probably very close to it has an LED light that lets us see what's going on with the pump without having to go down and look or touch or listen to the pump. The circuit has an automatic switch that will sense the water level and turn on the pump. If it goes high, turn it off again when it goes low. And of course, finally, it will have the submersible bilge pump. Now, if you look at this circuit, you might say, ah, Clark, you've messed up something. You've told us never have a circuit breaker that is larger in its shutoff and its uh, uh, protection than the smallest wire it protects. This wire certainly couldn't take five amps. This would burst into flames. I've broken my rule. Well, sometimes you break rules. I mean, technically you should have like a little fuse right here that protects this. But what you can also do is mount this and pay attention to the area. And if you feel that this wiring, this little bit here, can't get to any mischief, even if it burns, if there's nothing around it to be a problem, and you also kind of multiply that in your head by the chance, the fact that there's very little room for failure, it's very short here, you can decide, because it's your boat, to not have another fuse there. I'm not officially saying not to put a fuse there, but, you know, it becomes silly at some point. But definitely the wires that are going through the bilge and running through your cabinetry, they need to be protected. Well, that's about it. That is the simplest circuit I could think of. Um, we now have this circular circuit with power that runs uh, through it. I know that most people have this idea that power runs from the positive through the circuit to the negative. The guys that invented electricity, you know, Ohm and all those guys that things Voltaire, that things are named after, they assumed it went that way. Years later, uh, physics caught up a little bit and we found out what an electron is and we found that it actually goes the other way. Electrons leave the negative side, run through the system kind of backwards and dump back into the battery on the positive side. Just interest really. Doesn't matter. Doesn't change how things work. It's just how physics works. That's our practical example for today. Call it our lab. Uh, we'll get back into more theoretical things and work on the understanding of electricity. But every now and again, it's good to touch base with something that really works. If you have any particular questions, you can drive this series. Please comment down below saying, uh, asking any question that you think 
I might be able to answer. I'm sure if you have the question, other people have the same question. I don't think a week goes by and we don't have one of our higher end patrons that has my phone number call me up and ask me some kind of an electrical question. There's a lot to this, but it is all deep down pretty straightforward once you understand the fundamentals. Thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. You know, thumbs up, all that good stuff. Uh, throw this video to people that uh, might need it. If you know anybody with a boat that has electrical questions, we've had quite a few people comment lately. And these are people that are like very technical people, people that have been working as EEs or electrical techs for 40 years. And of course, they're constantly getting questions. And what they've been telling me in the comments is, thank you for doing this series. Now when I get that question, I send them to you. So if you've got any friends with potential electrical questions, please send this playlist to them. It would help uh, me to get more views and it should help them too. Thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. And thank you so much to our patrons. Bye from Temptress.